Ooh. All right. Can you guys hear me? Well, I'm talking to myself, but that's all right. I can hear me. Uh, on here. Sorry, this is the first time doing a live and not really sure. Let's see, I'm taking glasses off. It's a little better. Well, that's better. Okay, give it just a couple minutes. I'm early. Um, just to make sure everything's hooked up correctly. All right, we'll give it, yep, a couple more minutes. We'll wait till exactly 12 before I start here. All right, can you guys see me, hear me? Can you hear me okay? All right. Well, seeing it how it is 12.01, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if you're watching this recording, I hope you fast forwarded through all that. Um, but welcome to the TDS Floss tube number 18, um, where we are going to talk about finishes, whips, and we have a brand new, or I have a brand new fabric release for you guys. Um, so setup is a little different today. I wanted to um, be down in my office so I had more access to stuff as we are talking. Um, so first off, life update. It has been crazy. Um, my daughter, we did um, take her to her state archery competition. She did fantastic. Um, she was, uh, she had separate goals for each of her tournaments that she was shooting in. She met all of those goals. Um, she did 
great. So we're really proud of her. Um, and now she's practicing like crazy for nationals. So um, we'll be going, um, leaving town in about a month or so. So should be very exciting. And we're just, we've just been really, really busy with all of that and school and work and everything. So with that, a uh, little life update. Oh, and I hope everybody had a great Easter. Um, what did you guys do? We went, um, my husband and I love to go morel mushroom hunting. So we did in the morning. Didn't find anything because it's a little early. But um, yeah, we just worked in the garden. Um, got my garden beds all set up. Um, let's see what else. I got a new dishwasher. We did that Easter Sunday. So really we relaxed and just got stuff done. Cause we just, we've been so consumed with stuff. We haven't had an actual day to just be home and, you know, do the things that you needed to do. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'll start out with finishes. So my first finish is spring tier by Erin Elizabeth. Let's see, can you guys see me? Is it better this way? Okay. Um, Spring Tear by Erin Elizabeth. And I stitched this on 14 count. That is weird. Um, stitched it on 14 count chubby bunny blue. Just the regular, not opalescent. Um... And I finished it on the, I'll take, yeah. it's on a harvest block at Hobby Lobby, the fall section, and um, I just applied it with washers and magnets. Um, that's, a, that's how I've been finishing all of my tears by her. Um, it's a bit blurry, someone commented. That is your internet connection, so hopefully it's working for you. Okay. It should, it's trying to adjust or something like that. Um, but anyway, back to this, um, chubby bunny blue 14 count. I love how it turned out. I used the called for colors except for the blue because the blue like matched chubby bunny blue perfectly. Um, I went with a just darker denim blue. That was it. I mean, there was only like two or three places where you needed it anyway. So, but, um, that is it. I did a messy bow on top and then I bought a, um, a bunch of little wooden bunnies and did the Tim Holtz pigments, pigment sticks and, um, colored that bright pink, went over it with a wet, uh, brush and it looks really cute and it's crooked. There you go. <laughs> so this is Erin Elizabeth's Spring Tear. All right, next finish is Stitching with the Housewives. This is Lemonade Delivery. And I stitched this on 14 count grandpa's overalls and it turned out so cute um I did I I skipped the sign on top um and then I added instead of doing all of the lemons in queen bee I um added cottage daisy and just split it even since there were 14 lemons I did seven and seven Looks so cute. And then I reversed the truck and did it in Tropical Paradise um, rather than all white, how the original pattern was. So, whoops, moved over. There you go. And then I finished this on, it says uh, lemon, nice and easy, lemon squeezy, something like that. Um, I got this... Uh, piece at Hobby Lobby. It's in the spring shop. It's on an end cap where all the lemon decorations are, um, which not a lot this year, it seems like. Um, but anyway, regardless, sorry, <laughs> very cute. Um, love how this turned out. And again, this was stitched on 
14 counts, Grandpa's Overalls, which is in the Autumn series. So there you go. And then the last finish I have for you guys is Bigfoot Bunch. And sorry, this is weird <laughs> doing it backwards. Um, Bigfoot Bunch by Plum Street Samplers. And I stitched this on 16 count camo from our autumn series. I'll zoom in there. You can you can kind of see the camo up here, but really like camouflage, it blends in to your stitching. So it ends up looking like a really pretty green. Um, I did, I just pulled my own colors for this one. Um, it was a mix of classic color works and color and cotton. Um, I love how this turned out. It looks so cool. The variegation in here in his, uh, fur, I guess, um, turned out really cool. Um, I did finish this on a piece I bought at Dollar General. And what's cool about it is um, I found this really cool stain and I'll show it to you and I'll show you another piece I painted. Um, really cool stain. It, I think it's called Pewter. And um, I found it at Hobby Lobby yesterday. Let me put it down really quick and show you. It's called Tattered Angels Color Wash Tint. There, sorry. Uh, color Wash Tint in Pewter. You shake it up. It's really easy to put on. It's super, super watery. It's water-based. So just know that going in, like have paper towels ready and everything. But it looks really cool when it's done. It's got kind of a shine to it, but not really. Gives you kind of a, when it hits the light just right, you can see it. Um, looks really cool. Now the other one I did was I bought weathered copper and you can see down below, it's got the coppery, coppery color on it, but it gives off kind of an oxidized, um, copper effect. Um, I bought the bender board from Chantel 141. And I painted it. I haven't put my finished piece on quite yet, but look at that. That looks awesome. Again, really, really super easy to uh, paint, put on, stain. Um, I did, um, let's see, I let it dry overnight and then I put a, um, oh, a spray paint matte finish on it. Um, I was going to like grunge up the sides with the Tim Holtz like distressing stamps, but this color is so pretty. I don't think it needs it, especially for what I'm going to finish it with, which I can't tell you because it's the next fabric release. So, but you will see it soon enough. But I've got to glue it together. These pieces come together and they're so cool, easy. Where are you? Easy to paint. So there you go. Um, back to Bigfoot Bunch. I did finish him on here with magnets and washers because when she does her Plum Street Samplers does her animals, as you guys know, they're usually about the same size. So, so I just made it so I could easily exchange this out. And then my background fabric is just a really pretty pink that matched these flowers perfectly. I really don't know how I pulled that one off, but um, I had the fabric available. So very cool. Bigfoot bunch stitched on 16 count uh, camo from the autumn series. So that is it for finishes. And then I have been stitching like crazy. So those three finishes you saw I've been stitching on. Um, I stitched stuff for our next release uh, that we're not talking about today, by the way. Um, and then I have also been working on, which I'm so far behind on, I've been working on my um, temperature chart. So here is my mushroom chart. I have two rows done because I'm only through February. So, yep. 
but super cute. I love it. My Smurf village turned into more of a psychedelic village. It's got going on mushroom village. Um, and I love these little hedgehogs there to represent February. Now, March, I started, there is a Robin, whoops, other side. There is a Robin right there that will be surrounded by mushrooms. So very cool. I'm loving all the colors. I use the call for colors on it. Um, and I'm stitching this on 14 count chance of rain from our basic color series. All right. So my next whip to show you guys is the um, hands on design. I went back to my um, my ornament phase. I, I took this with me when I um, was going to stay with my daughter and um, I started it. It is Puffin Party. And for the life of me, I cannot think of the series, which is crazy because that's all I talked about last year, I feel like. What is this? Polar Plunge. There we go. Polar Plunge. And you cannot see that color very well. Let's change that lighting. Mm, that's better. Okay. I'm stitching this on. 16 count Caribbean waterfall and looking very cute, super easy stitch. All the called for colors, no changes. So, and this is the third um, ornament that I have um, been stitching. So the other, I've got, I think there's a total of six. So let me fix this light, sorry guys. There we go. Sorry. Live. What are you going to do? I thought we'd go live this time since Floss Tube 17 was just a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> Funny now. I can laugh about it. But um, it was just half of it or more than half of it was in slow motion. So I thought, let's try live. It'll automatically update. We'll see what happens. Right. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen live. So, all right, my last whip I have to show you is Log Cabin Christmas by Little House Needleworks. And I am working on the first um, pattern release. I, I've, I've seen so far, I think this week, she released uh, the second pattern. I can't remember for the life of me, like, what the name is, but it looks really cute. So I need to get my booty in gear. But um, this is what I have so far. And I am stitching this on 16 count pot of gold from our pot of gold series. So called for colors except the green and the red, the greens and the red, I changed out. I switched it up just to make it a little bit brighter. Let me switch that light. There, that's easier for you guys to see, right? Okay. So, and let me go ahead and tell you because I did tell you in 17, in Floss Tube 17, but we didn't get it. So, um, the greens I used instead of the called for for Log Cabin Christmas, I went with Jolly Holly. Um, steamed broccoli. And then for my red, I picked color and cotton winterberry. Just to brighten it up a tad because the browns that are called for, I didn't switch up, but they are really dark. They look great on this pot of gold, um, but I felt like it needed something brighter. So those were the changes. So I am moving along on that. All right. So now, without further ado, um, we are going to get into uh, the fabric release. And the fabric uh, series is called Summer Veggies. And let me move this up just a little bit. There we go. So Summer Veggies um, is just kind of, it's, 
Last year, last summer, I did summer fruit. So I thought it was time to, to visit some veggies. Um, and I just wanted to kind of do something a little bit different. Um, it seems like we had, we had just wham, bam releases that were very bright, very pastel. Um, this one is different, very different. And I enjoyed uh, working with it and I can't wait to stitch on it um, because yeah, it just has a different feel to it. Very different. Um, so yeah. So like I said, we had Marshmallow World, which was like a lot of pastel, beautiful pastel colors. Um, we jumped right into Love Notes with more pastels. Again, gorgeous. I think I, I've stitched on every piece, every color. Um, and then we had Chubby Bunny and Pot of Gold. It didn't have a lot of pastel. Um, it did have some dark in there, but it was a lot. We've had a lot of releases so far. So took a bit of a break, uh, recharged, and I am so excited to show you summer veggies now. So um, like always, um, I will show you Ada first. Um, then we'll go into Linda and last we'll do linen. Um, I like to show all, all three, um, different fabrics, um, that I print on just so you guys can see that there is a difference when you print, uh, when you do this type of printing, especially so, um, and with this series, there definitely is some differences. So, Pay attention if you are a Linda lover as well as a linen one. So, all right. So in summer veggies, we, we're going to start out with, let's see. I'm going to start out with what is probably in everybody's garden. Onions, onion skin. Let's see, make sure I got that right. Can you see it? Okay. So onion skin is going to be a wonderful neutral for you guys. Sorry, I'm trying to get this alignment. It is tough. Um, wonderful neutral. It is creamy. So it gives off the white onion, yellow onion, sweet onion um, type feel and um, modeling. But it also adds in a little bit of red onion. And I love the stripes in here because it gives off the onion layers. So very cool. This will be perfect for spring, summer, fall. Really? Yeah. Really good stitching for that. Again, very good neutral. And this is on Ada. Ada. There's uh, all right. Next in our garden, we are going to have artichokes. I'm a green girl, so we always have to have something green, right? Um, this is a dirty brownie green. Um, not bright. It's going to be more on the darker side. So this is going to be wonderful for your um, winter stitching, your fall stitching. Um, it's just going to be a great, great color. White is going to pop off this like crazy. So I love, love, love how this turned out. So artichoke in Ada. All right, and then next to our garden, this was actually um, a customer request. Um, not necessarily that it be a vegetable, but a color combination. So um, I was emailed and said, hey, th this person said, hey, would you be able to do something like X, Y, Z? And I was like, well, I'll think about it. Let's see what happens. Well, this actually worked out perfect. Um, and I'm happy to show you that this is eggplant. So we've got purples in here. There's some dark purples. There's some lighter purples to kind of offset. And then I've thrown in yellow's complementary to purple, right? I've thrown in some yellow just to kind of offset it and give you a little bit of a different modeling in here. It looks so cool. I love it. 
But anyway, that shows you if you guys have an idea for a color scheme that you're looking for, um, you can totally email me if I can work it in. I will completely consider it. Like, really, I will. So um, this is awesome. I love eggplant. Definitely eggplant for Halloween stitching. Um, this would look cool with like a monochromatic stitch. So like those Quaker things that that Quaker spring would actually look really good on here. If you did, I don't know what color you floss you would use, but it'd look really pretty on here. Um, Luminous Fiber Arts has the monochromatic little stitches as well. Um, she has lavender, doesn't she? Or violet? It's violet. Violet, that would look good on here too. And it's purple. So there you go. That is eggplant. And I kind of have some ideas for this one. Um, eggplant in Ada. All right. So to, uh, we got two more fabrics to go over. So in our veggie garden, in my personal veggie garden, I started out because I didn't know what I was doing with any type of gardening. Um, I started out with a pepper plant and I have stuck with peppers. I've done all sorts of peppers um, since then. It's been about, mm, about four years, going on my fourth year now um, with planting veggies. Um, so I wanted to put together, this is probably the brightest fabric we have in the series. I know, which is weird. Um, usually we don't, usually it's all bright, but this is Pepper Parade. And since there are so many different colors and varieties, um, I had to do all of them. And it's just so pretty. I love this. And what I love about these multicolored pieces of pieces is you can pick and stitch where you want. If you have, like, say this is a 14 by 16 piece and you want to stitch in the lighter version or you want more of the red, um, yellow, orange part stitch there. You can pick and choose where you want to stitch. That is the awesome part of this fabric. But you got your green peppers, you got your red peppers, you've got your yellow peppers. There's a little bit of yellow down here and you've got your orange peppers. So very cool. Sorry. There you go. All right. And then again, monochromatic stitching would look awesome on this. This would be great for summer stitching as well as fall stitching with these fall leaf colors, a brighter version of fall. So very cool. And then last but not least, um, I wanted to add something we've been talking about for quite a while. Um, I wanted to add another gray. Um, I think we need another gray as a neutral. Um, we could always use more grays, always more neutrals, right? So we can let our floss shine, all these flosses that we collect, um, shine off of our fabric. So I came up with watering can. And when you look at it, it's kind of hard to see in the on camera, but I'm telling you, when you look at it, it looks like you're looking down into an old metal gray watering can and you can see hints of the blue, the blue water in the can. So very, very cool. Um, I want to show you this opposite of flint that we have now, which flint is considered our darkest gray, but not anymore. So give me just a sec. Okay, so this is watering can, okay? This is flint. So much darker watering can is. Um, this is like medium gray compared to this guy. Um, Flint has blue in it as well, but it's a different, it has a different texture. Um, Flint has flecks of blue throughout, uh, mixed in with fle flecks of gray. 
Um, this is modeled and brushed and placed um, <laughs> colors. Um, sorry. Um, placed colors and everything. It looks so good. Sorry. My husband keeps texting. Apparently he's not watching my uh, floss tube. So I just texted him on live. <laughs> we'll see if he jumps on here. Um, he just got me with a bunch of <laughs> attachments. Anyway, regardless, what I was talking about was watering can. It is awesome. It is darker and it is definitely different than Flint. Okay. Let's look at this. Sorry. My big forehead is in the way and I'm just going to close it so you guys can see it. There you go. Watering can. Flint. There you go. All right. So that is it for summer veggies. Um, oh, watering can. Perfect for winter stitching, Halloween stitching, patriotic stitching. Look for a floss toss here pretty soon. I'm still waiting on that pattern to come, come in. Um, oh, by the way, has anybody's mail just been like super slow, like crazy slow? Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I sent my nephew's Valentine's Day gift, just regular U.S. mail. It was just a regular package, like what I ship my fabric into you guys. Um, he's He lives in Florida, and his Valentine's Day gift went to Puerto Rico, visited Puerto Rico, hung out for a little bit, and then went to the Carolinas for a little bit. And then finally, way after Valentine's Day, made its way to where he lives. So very interesting. But nevertheless, he got his Valentine's Day gift. Um, so and he was excited. So other than that. So besides that, um, I keep saying that a lot. I'm going to stop. Um, watering can. Gorgeous. This is it for summer veggies. So we'll go over really quick. Watering can, pepper parade, eggplant, artichoke, and onion skin. Woo! There you go. All right. So let me show you now the Linda version because there are some major differences. All right, so first, let's go with Linda, or excuse me, onion skin for Linda. Not a big difference, although, like I always say when we're doing these fabric releases, Linda is going to be slightly lighter than Ada, okay? So just keep that in mind. Great neutral, love this one. Next is eggplant in Linda. You can see a little bit more of the lighter purple I added in here. It's going to be over here. I can't point. There we go. Right there. Very cool. Pepper Parade. Not a real difference here because it is so intensely bright in some areas there's not much of a difference between this and the ada now here is the difference i love printing like it's so cool you think it's going to turn out one way and then it turns the complete opposite way of what you're thinking right this is artichoke it's a dirtier brown than green Still beautiful and will be a fantastic neutral for stitching. Um, I didn't want to mess with it. I didn't want to make it more green because it is beautiful as it is. Truly, 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 it is just gorgeous. Um, 
Let me show you. Okay, this is Linda. Linda. Ada. Look at that. I mean, that's huge. That is a huge difference between Ada Artichoke and Artichoke Linda. I mean, it's huge. Beautiful colors, though. Beautiful, beautiful. And I just, I, I didn't want to get rid of this color. It's just gorgeous to make it more green. I just, it's just cool the way it is. All right. So that was Artichoke. And then last one is Watering Can. Now, with Linda Watering Can, you do not see the blue as vibrant as you do in the Ada. So let me grab that really quick. So Linda, Ada. So look at that difference. The blue fades away into the background in Linda versus Ada where it's up, up close and personal for you. So just to keep it in mind. All right, so that is Linda Summer Veggies. All right, last but not least, I will show you guys the um, <laughs> Summer Veggies linen. Um, let's see. Now, as a rule of thumb, um, as Linda is lighter than Ada, linen is darker than Ada in some instances. So... And there is a difference that I will show you here. But to start out, onion skin, no difference. It looks good. I love this purple. It's just so cool. It's, it's beautifully placed. It's delicate. And it's not going to interrupt your stitching at all. There we go. All right. Pepper Parade. I love the modeling on this, the way I did it and kind of moving around the colors and everything. It just turned out really cool. Um, eggplant. And with this one, there's not much of a difference between this and Ada. All right. And then artichoke in linen. Oh, got a straggler here. Okay. This one, again, took on more of a dirty brown color rather than a more green color. So here's linen. Here's Ada. In artichoke. Again, another beautiful, beautiful shade. I don't want to get rid of it because it's just, it's so cool. So let's hold all of these up together just so you can see. I need to find it. Where'd I put it? Okay, right here. Okay, so what is this? <laughs> Ada. This is Ada Lennon. Linda, there's some differences. There's really, really a lot of difference, but all very cool, all very, very useful in our fall, winter, summer stitching. You can even use the Ada for some spring stitching if you wanted, if you wanted to do something more primitive um, with some darker or creamier colors this would totally work. So, all right, back to linen. That was artichoke. And our last one is watering can. Watering can is going to dial back that blue similar to the Linda fabric. So here is linen. And here is the Ada. There we go. So definitely you can see the blue more here in the Ada rather than in the Linda. Or excuse me, the linen. The linen. Ada. 
Ada Lennon. All right. So that is it. I hope you guys love summer veggies. I hope you guys are coming up with all sorts of ideas and, and, and ideas to, to stitch on. And I, I know I have ideas. I am looking forward to switching things up a bit. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I did the spring stitching. I'm good. After spring tier, I thought, yeah, I'm ready to move on to something else. That's why I, I kind of returned to the ornaments. Um, I'm doing log cabin Christmas. Um, I'm really in the mood to stitch Halloween right now. And I need to get patriotic done. So, you know, but what I want you to do is um, not during this live. Don't don't put it here. But part of the giveaway today um, is at the end when this is all up uploaded and it's a regular floss tube for you guys in the comments section um, to enter to win a, a one piece of a 10 by 12 piece of any color, any count of summer veggies. I just want you to comment what your favorite color in the series is um, and what you want to do with it. Um, U.S. residents only, um, 18 and over, you got a comment like I just described and um, like the video. You have to like the video and you have to just subscribe to the Digi Stitcher YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, that will be uh, the giveaway for Floss Tube 18, this Floss Tube. Um, so, yes, I hope you guys enjoy um, the new release. It is up in the store now, so you guys can go order it um, and take a look at it, take a look at the photos and all sorts of stuff. Um, another thing that I added to the store is a blemish sale. Now, with any type of printing, any type of dyeing, it doesn't matter whether you're hand dyeing, you're stamping, you're digitally printing like I am. Um, there will be mishaps. There will be screw ups. Um, I have done that a lot. And I know everybody does. Um, so I have quite the collection that I would love um, for, to get rid of. So um, I have um, put together a blemish sale uh, item on um, my Etsy shop. And what that entails is what is a blemish? Um, it is a line. It is a shade that maybe my coloring wasn't correct. Um, so like my blues were off that day or something like the yellows or whatever. It's off. It's not that perfect shade that I, it, it had originally attended to, intended to print. Um, there's a dot on there. Um, all sorts of stuff. There was a piece of... Um, Oh, the fuzzies that come off Linda and lin linen fabric. It had a fuzzy on it and it was stuck on there. It printed and now you can see where it was because the fuzzy fell off. Um, that type of thing. Um, I am not. Uh, so um, the blemish sale is just a collection of fabrics. It's Ada. It's Linda. Um, it's all counts in Ada right now. Um like I said, quite the collection. I'm looking at it over here at my desk. Um, different sizes, different colors, different series. So I've got 10 by 12s, mainly 14 by 16s and 16 by 20s, actually. Um, very few 10 by 12s. But what the cool thing is, so I've put this fabric on there in the blemish sale item. All you do is you pick what count. So you want a 16 count you put in 16 count, you order it. It's only eight bucks. It doesn't matter. There's no price difference. It doesn't matter. It's eight bucks no matter what. Um, so it's like a grab bag mystery bag thing. So when I get your order, um, you ordered a 16 count. I'm going to go to my 16 count pile, pull out what I have, and you are going to get Whatever count. You could end up with an opalescent, actually. You could end up with a 14 by 16 or a 16 by 20 or a 10 by 12. 
and it doesn't matter what shade. It's just kind of a grab bag thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, you just put in your count and you're, it's a surprise when you get it. Um, let me show you some examples because you're probably wondering. Uh, look, first and foremost, I would never send you guys fabric that I myself would not stitch on. I'm not going to send you something with like this big black dot or big line going across the whole thing. I would never do that. Um, so it is definitely stuff you can add to your stash, pull it out, cut around the imperfection, um, and then just go merrily on your way. So I've got two examples to show you here. So give me a sec. Okay, so this is 14 count. I had I have post it notes everywhere on all this fabric. Um, 14 count actually, 16 by 20 fall feels from the autumn series. Um, this is pretty good. Um, the imperfection, let me show you. Do you see that dark red dot or pink dot? That's it. That is it on this entire piece of fabric, guys. Okay? So some pieces may have one dot. Other pieces may have just like a sprinkle like in one area. That's it. Definitely. You guys, I'm not going to give you anything that you won't be able to stitch something on. Okay? So a dot. Let me show you an example of a line. This is a 16 count piece of 16 by 20, my blue heaven. Sorry, it's all over the place. Definitely a big piece. Good for that bee stitching if you're into the bees. Haven't quite gotten into it. What, this is a good question. If you're into the bee stitching, what pattern got you into it? Because my, Mother and I, we, we haven't quite gotten into the bees. I've done clover and hive. I just haven't done um, anything else. What is the one pattern that got you, like, just pulled pulled you in hook, line, and sinker? Um, what is that? Because this fabric, My Blue Heaven, is perfect for that because it, it showcases and grandpa's overalls, actually plug, shameless plug for grandpa's overalls. Um, it sh it uh, shows off yellow beautifully. So anyway, back to blemish. Sorry, I saw a squirrel. Um, okay, so this is my blue heaven 16 by 20 uh, size. <laughs> and this is a line right here. It just didn't get pressed. It kind of got pressed onto itself. And then when it printed, it was still like on top of one of itself, but then when pressed, it went flat. And there you have a line right there. Um, you like cut that off. You got this whole piece to stitch on for eight bucks. I mean, that's not bad at all. Like that's a bargain. So, um, so yeah, it's limited quantities. Um, so I've put in how many quantities that they're like, how many I have of each count. So um, once they're gone, they're gone until I screw up again, um, which really this batch is like the, what I'll, I'll do it for this year, 2024. Um, and then once we run out, I'll take the, uh, um, the blemish sale down. Um, and then the more screw, the more, not the more screws. That's terrible. Um, more, if I have more, which I will, um, I'll just collect them throughout the year and we'll do it again this time next year or something like that. Um, or, you know, just when I have a bunch and I need to get rid of them, we'll just cycle through and, uh, put it up on the Etsy shop again. So, um, and then, yeah, so the blemish sale is up on the store and all of summer veggies. So Linda, Ada, and Lennon. No opalescent this time. 
since our colors are so dark, I didn't feel like there was a need for it. Um, so yeah. So with floss tube 17 being just weird, um, which is funny because when I had taped it and uploaded it and everything, it wasn't slow-mo. So it was just crazy. I don't know what happened. Um, but it, we were actually out of town that weekend. And when it went live, because I had scheduled it ahead of time, when it went live, I was watching it in the morning. And then it all of a sudden just went slow-mo. I was like, oh no. And in 17, I had announced the winners from Floss Tube 16, which was our birthday celebration, which was awesome. Um, I announced the winners in 17 and I don't blame you guys for not watching that one <laughs> for uh, Floss Tube 17. It was a mess. Um, it did pick up at the end, um, where you could hear the winners, but eh, let's skip it. So I want to announce the winners from Floss Tube 16 again to give, uh, them a chance to claim their prize. Um, so let's see. So back in Floss Tube 16, it was a 14 by 16 piece of any count of the um, Digi Stitchery birthday confetti fabric, the exclusive fabric, which is now put up. So my two winners are P LA underscore stitches p dash la underscore stitches um and then my next winner is the camping librarian so congratulations to you guys uh the camping librarian and p dash la underscore stitches uh, my email address is down in the uh, description below Email me, tell me your address, what color, uh, or not what color, it's the same fabric, um, what count and type of fabric that you want. Um, the, oh, just for the winners, you, there is an opalescent option. So if you're wanting it not opalescent, just let me know. Um, and let's see, that is it. So congrats to the winners, um, to enter for this floss tube, floss tube 18's giveaway, uh, comment after the live, um, comment down below, uh, what your favorite piece of summer veggies is, um, and what you want to stitch on it with. Um, you will win one 10 by 12 color and count of your choice. You need to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and um, yeah, that's it. And I just want to thank you guys for sticking with me and being very excited for this release. I'm excited for it. It's a change. It's different. It feels good to have something out now. It's because it's been a while because we just went balls to the wall, just like crazy uh, at the beginning of the year. It was nice. It's nice to be back with a new release. So I'll do a quick review of Summer Veggies and then I will let you guys go. Watering Can. This is Ada. Artichoke. Probably should open them. Pepper Parade. Eggplant. And Onion Skin. So there you have it. Guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Um, and yeah, have fun. Enjoy this beautiful weather where you have beautiful weather. So I'm sorry for the snow in the Northeast um, and all the craziness going on. Um, I hope uh, spring reaches you soon, everyone. And you guys, we can all enjoy planning our summer garden veggies or flowers. So I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.